This is the first of two launches for Welcome to Kelston, volume one of my political cartoons. The book's principally a collection of cartoons I've, that have been previously published on Wings Over Scotland, but not exclusively. And it's not, it's not every cartoon that was ever in Wings. And it's not meant to be a history of the independence referendum in particular, given that we're now a year on from that. It ended up being the mapping really of a journey that Scotland has taken over the last two to three years. We've now got roughly 50% of the people in this country are at least open to the idea of independence, open to the idea of us being a normal country. And the fact that we've done that in just a couple of short years is just amazing. And I've been lucky enough to draw the cartoons and the book happily enough just happens to chart them. I know by looking at you that you've been listening to your auntie Griselda. One of the astonishing things just uh, before the referendum was the uh, Scotsman getting rid of all its cartoonists. And, uh, I'm the uh, owner of the uh, Leaper Gallery. It was actually home to the legendary Alexander Reid, whose claim, one of his claims to fame was sharing digs with the Van Gogh brothers in Paris in the 1880s subsequently came back to Glasgow and this was his uh, gallery from uh, 1904 for 20 odd years. The job of the cartoonist is actually very, very difficult because he's got one image or a couple of images sometimes to give effect to um, a whole political argument. Well, Chris is particularly interesting because um, his original career was as a, a, as a straightforward journalist. He has got a quite phenomenal talent uh, as, a, as an artist and in particular as a draftsman. If you look at Punch or Private Eye or any of the satirical magazines, it's the cartoons that always carry the biggest punch because they can portray situations and you know, modes of thought that are difficult to convey in words. I mean, just look at an image of Hamish and such a simple image can capture so much. The appeal of the cartoons, I'm pleased to say, seems to transcend what you might call the normal Wings audience, but the Wings audience itself is huge. And of course, Wings in terms of its, uh, its ability to crowdfund and uh, represent that radical, I think, um, pro-independence uh, viewpoint is, is, as I say at the start of the book, it's a journalistic phenomenon and I'm I'm really seriously proud of being a small part of it. There's an awful lot more going on in these drawings than simply being a cartoon. I think that both him, Greg Moody, people like Steve Cavalli and the Herald really come into their own during the referendum campaign. Chris and I go back a long way to when both of us worked with the Scotsman publications and uh, I then re-encountered him through his work as a cartoonist. Uh, prior to that, he'd been a very good journalist and probably still is. It almost seems um, slightly understating it to describe it merely as a cartoonist, but it's quite obvious that he's, he's a fine artist. Uh, he's always had a, a, a wry, a quiet sense of humour and a sense of the ridiculous. And, and I think that a lot of that, and that's part of his character, and I think a lot of that comes out in his... Uh, his drawings, uh, especially over the referendum, and I thought a lot of them provided a nice contrast on Wings Over Scotland. It's almost kind of gentle, laid-back humour, as opposed to um, the quite a lot of the writing in Wings Over Scotland, which um, 
which was a bit more aggressive and belligerent. I've never liked Chris Cairns, I, and I don't like his work. He's, a, he's a, just a, un, he's an unpleasant character, let's face it, and uh, him and I have never seen eye to eye. <laughs> well, the truth is that Chris has been uh, uh, busy beavering away for two years now doing these cartoons uh, for Wings Over Scotland, mostly, and uh, he just never got around to actually publishing a book of them. So he's very, very popular. He's far more popular than me, in fact. So it was just an absolute no-brainer to, to help him put a book out. I'm acting as publisher because he'd just be on a beach somewhere, let's face it. He's got no interest in doing this kind of thing. He's just a, you know, he's Thompson Holiday's best customer. I've seen Chris's work on Wings Over Scotland, but it was a few months ago that we were both on a panel at the I Write Festival in Glasgow, and it was about freedom of speech. It was set up by Scottish Pen, and it was in the aftermath of the Charlie Hebdo shootings. Um, and that's something that's really close to my heart, the idea of freedom of expression, and I think cartoonists in particular have a really strong way of holding people to account. There is one particular cartoon that, for me, stands out. It's the... Uh, it was... <laughs> It was when the oil tycoons were all saying that we were far better together and Chris has this cartoon of a, a wee guy sitting outside a, this kind of abandoned uh, tenement and he says, uh, suppose I better vote no then. I just loved that, I was, that was just genius. The mainstream media has really failed us. I think everybody's um, kind of agreed on this one. We're, ha we're having to rebuild the media and the, the only way we can do this is, you know, through a majorly concerted effort uh, and all of these people are, have been working very, very hard. That's what's required. Good journalism, good satire, uh, good commentary. You need to pay for that. You know, these things, we, we, we're not eccentric millionaires. You know, we, we need to be able to, to you know, uh, earn money. You know, myself, Greg, we Ginger Doug, you know, um, obviously Wings, um, Common Space. You know, it, it was not, the names have all just gone straight out of my head, but it would be these people, we, 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 need, we need funding. Uh, and we need people to put their hands in their pockets and until such times as we get a rich sugar daddy in the corporate media world, then that's what, that's what we've got. IndyRef certainly gave cartoonists in Scotland a boost and you can contrast that with the decline of cartoonists in the mainstream media. So again, it's the new media platforms that are providing a place for this and I still think things are really strong. Wings Over Scotland is still seems to be as strong as ever, Bella Caledonia the same and Common Space of course came about after the independence referendum and our traffic continues to go up, the interest continues to go up, we have more and more contributors all the time. But you now see that there is a, a firm place for new media in Scotland, that it has established itself and it is even recognised now by the mainstream media as a valuable contribution to journalism in Scotland. The independence referendum was probably the single uh, biggest political and cultural happening in Scotland um, since the dawn of what we might call democratic politics. And it engaged, as such, it engaged many, many more people than would otherwise be engaged in just simple party politics. I think that will, um, will lead to a, a flowering of confidence in the creative arts going forward. My piece at the start of the book is called Interesting Times. We live in interesting times and we continue to live in interesting times. And I want to be there to report them in the way that I do. Uh, and I know Greg and, and others want to do that as well. Um, we're not done yet. This story is not over. We're just, we're really at the start of this. And I want to keep going and I hope everybody in the wider yes movement and beyond understands the necessity to keep this going and to keep the new media going and to support us in what we're doing until such times as, you know, we get a media in this country that reflects now amazingly, which is 50% like of the, the views of the electorate.